Hello everyone, welcome back to the video lecture on digital signal processing and in the previous lecture I had started uh, der deriving the properties of DFT so we will continue the same in this video lecture also. So we had actually done the properties periodicity, linearity circular symmetry of sequence, symmetry property, circular convolution. This much we had done in the previous lecture. So, we will continue the uh, proof of the remaining properties. So, the sixth property of DFT is time reversal of a sequence. Ti in time reversal of a sequence, if we have a sequence x of n in the time domain and we apply endpoint DFT, we get x of k then x of minus n modulo n that means time reversal of a sequence or in other words if the time domain sequence has been reversed then you apply the endpoint DFT on the time reversed sequence. The frequency in frequency domain the DFT also is time re uh, reversed. So, we know x of minus n modulo n can be written as x of n minus n. Similarly, x of minus k modulo n can be written as x of n minus k. So, reversing the endpoint sequence in time uh, equivalent to reversing the DFT values. When the sequence is circularly folded, its DFT is also circularly folded that is what this particular property indicates. So, let us take the DFT of x of n that is x of k is given by summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n to the power of n k. Now, if you want to find out DFT of x of minus n modulo n, then that will be equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of minus n modulo n, I will directly write it as x of n minus n w n to the power of n k. Now, we will take n minus n as m or n can be written as n minus m. So, when n equal to 0, then m is equal to, I will substitute n is equal to 0 here, so m is equal to n. And when n is equal to n minus 1, then m will be equal to 1. So, here we will substitute, when n is equal to 0, m is n. And when n is equal to n minus 1, m is 1 x of n minus n will replace it with m w n to the power of n we are going to replace with n minus m into k. So, here in this summation we have m is equal to n to 1. So, if we do summation like a plus b plus c or c plus b plus a it does not matter. So, this summation I can write it as summation m is equal to 1 to n. So, this summation consists of n points and uh, because the uh, like the limits of summation are indirectly same because the circular nature of the sequence and the DFT is also periodic. So, whatever samples we take from uh, 1 to n, it is equivalent to taking the samples from 0 to n minus 1 because they are the samples are circular in nature. So, here the summation the limits we will write it as m is equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, n to 1 first I change to 1 to n and the samples from 1 to n is equivalent to samples from 0 to n minus 1. That means total number of samples present is equal to n. So, summation m is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of m. Now, we are going to expand this w n to the power of n k into w n to the power of minus m k. 
So W n to the power of n k we know it is equal to 1. So this can be written as summation m is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of m W n to the power of minus m k. Now here what we can do is that we can multiply with W n to the power of m n. W n to the power of m n is also equal to 1. And now I will take m common so that here I will get W n to the power of n minus k. So dft of x of minus n modulo n which is equal to dft of x of n minus n we got it as summation m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of m w n to the power of I had taken m common and we got n minus k here. So this is equivalent to the uh, formula of dft except that in place of k we have n minus k. So this will be equal to x of n minus k and x of n minus k can be written as x of minus k modulo n. So the dft is periodic over the period n and x of n minus k is equal to folding of x of k or in other words uh, x of k is, is reversed. So thus we have proved that dft of the time reversed sequence is equal to the reversed sequence x of k. Next property is circular time shift of a sequence. From the name circular time shift it indicates that the time domain sequence has been shifted in time. So if the original sequence x of n the dft is x of k then time sh uh, shift circular time shift it means the uh, input sequence or the time domain sequence is circularly shifted and circularly shifted it is indicated in this way x of n minus l modulo n that means x of n is circularly shifted by a value l then when you apply dft on this circularly circular time shifted sequence we will get x of k into e to the power of minus j 2 pi k l by n and this we can even write in terms of twiddle factor as x of k into now this e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n can be written as w n no, to the power of k l so here we will write to the power of k l. So the endpoint dft of the circular time shifted sequence will be equivalent to product of original dft and exponential term e to the power of minus j 2 pi k l by n or the twiddle factor w n to the power of k l. So we have to now prove this. Now here uh, what we do is that we take the dft of x of n minus l modulo n. So dft of x of n minus l modulo n we substitute this in the formula of dft that is summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n minus l modulo n w n to the power of n k. Now, so this will be equal to now x of n minus l modulo n can be written as x of n minus l plus capital N w n to the power of n k. Now this particular summation what we are going to do is we are going to split it into two summations that is n is equal to 0 to l 0 to l minus 1 and l to n minus 1. So the same summation I will split into two that is l is equal to 0 to l minus 1 containing l points x of n minus l plus n w n to the power of n k plus summation continue. So 0 to l minus 1 so the next sample that is l to n minus 1 n minus l plus n w n to the power of n k. 
now we will take these two summations one by one and addition of the two results will give us the final dft so first one is summation n is equal to 0 to l minus 1 x of n minus l plus n w n to the power of n k now here we will take n minus l plus n as m so <coughs> we will take n minus l plus n as m then i can write n as i'll take l the other side l plus m minus n and when n is equal to 0 then m will be equal to n minus l and when n is equal to l minus 1 then m will be equal to if i substitute l minus 1 then m will be equal to n minus 1 so in this summation i am going to substitute when n is equal to 0 m is equal to n minus l and when n is equal to l minus 1 it is n minus 1 x of n minus l plus n will replace it with m w n to the power of instead of n we have to write l plus m minus n m minus n into k now when i split this i know w n to the power of minus n k is equal to 1 so this particular summation uh, i can write it as uh, this is equivalent to writing it as summation m is equal to n minus l to n minus 1 x of m w n to the power of l plus m into k so this is the first one now we'll take the second one summation n is equal to l to n minus 1 the second one is summation n is equal to l to n minus 1 x of uh, n minus l plus n w n to the power of n k so here also uh, n minus l plus n can be written as m or n will be m plus l minus n and this time when n n is equal to l m will be equal to here l minus l cancels it will be equal to n and when n is equal to n minus 1 if i substitute n minus 1 here n minus 1 then we will get m is equal to 2n minus l minus 1 so this summation will be summation m is equal to when n is equal to l m is equal to n and for n minus 1 it is 2n minus l minus 1 x of m w n to the power of in place of n we will write m plus l minus n into k now you can see the summation n to 2n minus l minus 1 so this samples from n to 2n minus l minus 1 is equal to samples from 0 to n minus l minus 1 because the samples are circular in nature so we can take m equal to 0 to n minus l minus 1 x of m w n to the power of here when i multiply uh, once again w n to the power of minus n k is equal to 1 so we will get w n to the power of m plus l into k this is the second one so uh, actual dft of x of n minus l modulo n is equal to our first equation plus second equation first equation we had got summation m is equal to n minus l to n minus 1 summation m is equal to n minus l to n minus 1 x of m w n to the power of m plus l into k plus 
the second one that is summation m equal to 0 to n minus l minus 1 x of m w n to the power of uh, m plus l into k. Now here you can see inside the two summations whatever terms are there they are e same and you see and you see the summations here summation m is equal to n minus l to n minus 1 and here it is 0 to n minus l minus 1. So there is a continuation 0 to n minus l minus 1 and then n minus l to n minus 1. So n minus l is the next sample of n minus l minus 1. So we can write this summation as summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 by combining both x of m into w n to the power of like m plus l into k I will write it as m k into w n to the power of l k. So w n to the power of l k. Now summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of m w n to the power of m k is equal to x of k and into this particular term w n to the power of l k. So this is also equal to x of k. If I convert this into exponential term w n is e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n to the power of l k. So we have got or we have proved the property of circular time shift. Cir uh, circular time shift that means time sh uh, shift in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication of the dft x of k with e to the power of minus j 2 pi l k by n where l is the uh, value by which the time domain sequence has been circularly shifted. Next is the circular frequency shift as the name suggests circular frequency shift that means the signal in the frequency domain has been shifted then uh, when there is shift in the frequency domain it means it is equivalent to multiplication of the time domain sequence with the exponential term. So when x of n the dft is x of k then x of n e to the power of j 2 pi l n by n the dft will be x of k minus l modulo n that means shift in the frequency domain is equal to multiplication of exponential term with the uh, time domain sequence. Now this we can also write it as x of n e to the power of j 2 pi by n can be written as w n to the power of minus 1 into l n so w n to the power of minus l n. Now we can prove this in two different ways you can take the dft formula and then get x of k minus l modulo n or you can use idft formula and get back the time domain sequence so we can take the dft formula so dft of x of n w n to the power of minus l n is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n to the power of minus l n that is the dft which you have to find out into w n to the power of n k. So this we can write it as summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n to the power of I will take n common I will get k minus l. See this x of k minus l modulo n is nothing but x of k minus l plus n. So here if I have to get plus n what I have to do I have to multiply this term with w n to the power of n n. And the multiplication with w n to the power of n n does not change anything because w n to the power of n n is equal to 1. So this is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n to the power of I will take n common k minus l plus n. 
Now this formula is same as the DFT formula except that instead of k we have k minus l plus n. Now in the DFT formula if k is there you will get x of k. Here k minus l plus n is there so we will get x of k minus l plus n. And this can be written as x of k minus l modulo n. So we have proved the circular frequency shift properly property. So hence the multiplication of the sequence x of n with complex exponential sequence that is e to the power of j 2 pi l n by n is equivalent to circular shift of the DFT by l units in the frequency domain. Thus you can see that uh, this is uh, this property is dual to the circular time shift property. Next is complex conjugate property. Now if DFT of x of n is x of k, the n point DFT, then conjugate of x of n, the DFT will be conjugate of x of minus k modulo n and if you have to find the DFT of conjugate of x of minus n modulo n then the n point DFT will be conjugate of x of k. So conjugate of x of n DFT is conjugate of x of minus k modulo n that is conjugate of the reversed sequence of x of k. Similarly, if conjugate of reversed sequence of x of n, the DFT will be conjugate of x of k. Now, this x of minus k modulo n can be written as x of n minus k. So, con this is equal to conjugate of x of n minus k. Similarly, this is equal to conjugate of x of n minus n. So, first we will prove this particular property by taking DFT of conjugate of x of n. DFT of conjugate of x of n is summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 conjugate of x of n because we are finding the DFT of conjugate of x of n w n to the power of n k. So, here you see the DFT I should get it as conjugate of x of n minus k. So, I will take whole conjugate outside. So, what will I get? n is equal to 0 to n minus 1. If I have to take conjugate outside, conjugate of x of n will be x of n and this w n to the power of n k I have to write the conjugate and conjugate of w n to the power of n k is w n to the power of minus n k. Why? Because w n to the power of n k is we had discussed this previously also it is e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n which is equal to cos 2 pi n k by n minus j sin 2 pi n k by n. So, if I take conjugate this will become plus or in other words conjugate will be e to the power of plus j 2 pi n k by n which is equal to w n to the power of minus n k. So, that is the reason why conjugate of w n to the power of n k is w n to the power of minus n k. We have to get instead of k we have to get n minus k. So, what will I do? I will multiply this term with w n to the power of n n. So, then we will get summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n to the power of I will take small n common so, I will get capital N minus k whole conjugate. Why did I multiply with w n to the power of n n? We know w n to the power of n n is equal to 1 and instead of k I want n minus k x of k instead of x of k I want x of n minus k. That is why we have multiplied with w n to the power of n n so that n I can take common and instead of k I will have n minus k. So, this will be now equal to now, this formula summation x of n w n to the power of n minus n into n minus k is x of n minus k and whole conjugate is there 
that conjugate is this so dft of conjugate of x of n will be conjugate of x of n minus k which is equivalent to conjugate of x of minus k modulo n okay so now similarly if we have to prove this uh, second property of complex conjugate i will take idft of conjugate of x of k then it will be simple to prove so idft of conjugate of x of k you can prove the other way also by taking the dft no problem formula of idft is 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 conjugate of x of k w n to the power of minus n k now here once again the result which i have to get is conjugate of x of n minus n so that we have to keep in mind i'll take conjugate out so this will be 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k if i have to, if i want to take conjugate outside so this conjugate of x of k it will become x of k and conjugate of w n to the power of minus n k is w n to the power of n k now here what i will do i need uh, n minus n so we will write this as 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k w n to the power of we will write this as because uh, w n to the power of n k i need it in this form w n to the power of minus n k because i want to use the idft so i'll write it as minus n into minus k now 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k w n to the power of minus k into minus n into w n to the power of uh, I need n minus n so here if I have to have n here it means I should multiply with minus n k and w n to the power of minus n k is equal to 1 so 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k w n to the power of I will take minus k common I will get n minus n now 1 by n summation x of k w n to the power of minus k n we will get x of n instead of n here n minus n is there so it will be x of n minus n and this conjugate will put it here and this is equal to conjugate of n minus n i can write it as minus n modulo n x conjugate of x of minus n modulo n so we have proved the next property as well next is circular correlation what do you mean by correlation correlation means you are relating two different signals so when two different signals are being uh, related or in other words you are finding out the relationship between two different sequences we call it as cross correlation but if two similar sequences you are taking and you are finding the relationship between them then we call that as auto correlation auto correlation means finding the similarity between same sequences so it is like uh, taking two cosine signals and finding the relation that is auto correlation taking cosine signal and sine signal and then finding the relationship between the two then that is uh, cross correlation a simple example so here for complex valued sequence x of n and y of n if the dft of x of n is x of k and dft of y of n is y of k then the circular correlation circular uh, correlation of the two sequences x of n and y of n which is given by 
summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n minus l modulo n this is the circular correlation formula that is summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n minus l modulo n the dft of the circular correlation is x of k into conjugate of y of k now you see this is similar to our circular convolution right in circular convolution okay we had some little different formula but the dft we had got was equal to product of the individual dfts so uh, there we had the, the formula was summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n y of m minus n modulo n there was no conjugate here conjugate is there so conjugate appeared in the dft also that's how we can remember now in circular convolution we had m minus n or if i had used l it would have been l minus n but here it is n minus l that is another difference so conjugate was not there and this was uh, minus of whatever is there here so and autocorrelation that means r x x of l then the dft would have been x of k into conjugate of x of k which we can write it as it is in the form of like a plus j b into a minus j b or we can write it as magnitude of x of k whole square so this is the uh, property of circular correlation so circular correlation in the time domain is equivalent to product of x of k and conjugate of y of k now the formula we take the formula of the circular correlation summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n minus l i will write it as minus of l minus n modulo n and this uh, if i now take summation of x of n conjugate of y of minus of l minus n modulo n if i want to write this in terms of circular convolution this will be x of n circular convolution with conjugate is there so conjugate of here minus is there so minus n so the circular correlation is equal to circular convolution of x of n and conjugate of y of minus n that means the second sequence you are taking the conjugate and then reverse also y of minus n you have done so from the circular convolution uh, property what we have circular convolution in the time domain the dft uh, will be product of the individual dfts so dft of r x y of l is equal to dft of x of n circular convolution with conjugate of y of minus n then this will be equal to from the property of circular convolution it will be equal to dft of x of n into dft of conjugate of y of minus n now dft of x of n we know it is equal to x of k but we will have to find out dft of conjugate of y of minus n so to find the dft of conjugate of y of minus n we will substitute this in the formula of dft that is n is equal summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 conjugate of y of minus n w n to the power of n k now we will substitute minus n is equal to m or n is equal to minus m 
when n equal to 0 m will be equal to 0 and when n is equal to n minus 1 m will be equal to minus of n minus 1 if I substitute it here. So, the samples 0 to minus of n minus 1 is equivalent to samples from 0 to n minus 1. So, the limits will not change. So, we will write this as summation m is equal to 0 to n minus 1 conjugate of minus n we will write it as m w n to the power of n we will write it as minus m into k. So, we get dft of conjugate of y of minus n is equal to summation m equal to 0 to n minus 1 conjugate of y of m into w n to the power of minus m k right. <coughs> now, we will take the conjugate common. So, common in the sense whole conjugate we will write. So, 0 to n minus 1 y of m. If I have to write whole conjugate w n to the power of minus m k can be written as w n to the power of m k. So, this is equal to this is y of k and whole conjugate. So, dft of conjugate of y of minus n is equal to conjugate of y of k. So, finally, dft of r x y of l that is circular correlation which is equal to dft of uh, x of n circular convolution with conjugate of y of minus n we had taken it as dft of x of n into dft of conjugate of minus n by using circular convolution property. Now, this is equal to dft of x of n is x of k and dft of conjugate of y of minus n we found it to be conjugate of y of k. Okay. So, we have proved the property. So, instead of y of k if I write x of k for autocorrelation obviously x of k into conjugate of x of k we will get that is a plus j b into a minus j b which is a square plus b square. So, that is equal to magnitude of x of k whole square. Next is multiplication of two sequences. We will take two sequences x1 of n whose dft is x1 of k and x2 of n the dft is we will write it as x2 of instead of k I will write it as l. Then product multiplication of the two sequences in the time domain that is x1 of n into x2 of n the dft will be 1 by n into circular convolution of the DFTs of the individual sequences. So, I will write this as x3 of n and this I will take it as x3 of k. Instead of I used k here, l here. So, let me use uh, another variable. So, we will use for example m and we can see that this property is dual to circular convolution property. In circular convolution property circular convolution in the time domain was equivalent to product of the individual DFTs in the frequency domain and here circular convolution in the frequency domain is equivalent to product of the individual sequences in the time domain. So, x3 of m is obtained that means obtained by dft of x3 of n. x3 of m is dft of x3 of n. So, that is dft of x1 of n into x2 of n and in the dft formula we will substitute this. 
so summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n x2 of n w n to the power of n k okay instead of k we have to use m now x1 of n and x2 of n will substitute with the idft formulas because x1 of n is idft of x1 of k and x2 of n is idft of x2 of l so we will have summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n idft of x1 of k so 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k w n to the power of minus n k into x2 of n is idft of x2 of l see we have used the variable l here so 1 by n summation here i'll write l is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of l w n to the power of minus n l into w n to the power of n m So we will rearrange the summations. So I'll have summation k equal to zero to n minus one x one of k summation l equal to zero to n minus one x two of l summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 and all the twiddle factors will have and 1 by n 1 by n I'll write 1 by n square outside here so this will be w n to the power of minus k n minus l n and n m so n is common in all we'll write m minus k minus n right now if you remember we had solved similarly for uh, circular convolution also this is of the form summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 a to the power of n where a equal to w n to the power of m minus k minus n and what is the formula it is 1 minus a to the power of upper limit plus 1 by 1 minus a provided a is not equal to 1 so when a equal to wn to the power of m minus k minus m minus k minus l m minus k minus l so a is equal to m wn to the power of m minus k minus l this formula holds good when a is not equal to 1 so what we have i'll take the summation separately so summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 w n to the power of n into m minus k minus l this I, I told you it is equal to 1 minus a to the power of upper limit plus 1 by 1 minus a provided a is not equal to 1 and what is the condition for a will be equal to 1 the condition here is w n to the power of m minus k minus l is not equal to 1 what is the condition for which this is equal to 1 and before that you see here we have w n to the power of m minus k minus l into n that means w n to the power of multiple of n we have so that will be equal to 1 so 1 minus 1 will have 0 so this is 0 by 1 minus w n to the power of m minus k minus l now here the answer will be 0 if this condition satisfies but if this condition does not satisfy that means w n to the power of m minus k minus l is equal to 1 
then the denominator will also become 0 and we cannot accept this solution of the summation. So, what is the condition we will have to check? W n to the power of m minus k minus l will be equal to 1 when m minus k minus l will be a multiple of capital N or we will take m minus k minus l we will write it as p into n some multiple of n. So, if this is equal to p n then w n to the power of m minus k minus l will be equal to w n to the power of p n which is equal to 1. Thus, this summation is equal to 0 if m minus k minus l is not equal to p n, but if it is equal to p n, if this summation is equal to p n, then what you have to take, I can't take this solution. So, we have to go back to the summation and substitute p n here or w n to the power of p n into n will be 1. So, summation of 1 will be equal to upper limit minus lower limit plus 1 that is n minus 1 minus 0 plus 1 which is equal to n. So, this we are going to substitute in the previous summation, uh, summation formula. So, we have the DFT of x1 of n into x2 of n. is equal to 1 by n square summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k uh, summation x2 of l like x2 of l that l we will write it as l is equal to m minus k minus p n so summation l will go and we will get the same summation here into this n. So, this n will cancel 1 n and I will get 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x 1 of k into x 2 of here I have m minus k minus p n. So, this I can write it as m minus k modulo n because if you look at this term x2 of m minus k minus p n this x2 of m minus k minus p n is equal to like when p is equal to 0 we will get x2 of m minus k if it is equal to 1 I will get uh, x2 of m minus k minus 1 or if it is minus 1 I will get x2 of m minus k plus n. So, actually uh, this continues or it is nothing but periodic repetition of x2 of m minus k with a period of n. So, that is why we write it as x2 of m minus k modulo n and this if you look at this formula, this formula is equal to the circular convolution formula. So, dft of x1 of n into x2 of n will be equal to 1 by n into summation x1 of k x2 of m minus k modulo n is the uh, circular convolution formula of x1 of k with x2 of k and this proves the property multiplication in the time domain is equivalent to circulation in the frequency do uh, circular convolution in the frequency domain circular convolution in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication in the frequency domain next is uh, uh, Parsval's theorem for complexed value sequence x of n and y of n, if the DFT of x of n is x of k and DFT of y of n is y of k, then Parsval's theorem indicates that summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 of x of n conjugate of y of n is equal to 1 by n summation of k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k into conjugate of y of k or if you have a single uh, signal x of n then this will be x of uh, uh, summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n into conjugate of x of n is nothing but x of n magnitude of x of n whole square 
and here similarly we will get summation x of k into conjugate of x of k can be replaced with magnitude of x of k whole square and this gives the energy of the signal x of n so energy of the signal time domain and in the frequency domain so this Parsifal's theorem we have to prove so to prove the Parsifal's theorem we make use of uh, circular correlation so what is the circular correlation property circular correlation property is like r x y of l which is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n minus l modulo n the dft is x of k conjugate of y of k this is the uh, circular correlation property I will take uh, the circular correlation R x y of L which is given by summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n minus L and for L is equal to 0 for L equal to 0 this will be summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n modulo n y of n modulo n that is will be equal to n plus n y of n plus n and y of n plus n is equal to y of n because of circular symmetry so this can be written as 0 to n minus 1 x of n conjugate of y of n now from the uh, correlation property we know that IDFT of RXY of K will be equal to RXY of L. So we will take that also. I will solve it here. So IDFT of RXY of K is equal to 1 by n summation uh, k equal to 0 to n minus 1 rxy of k is x of k into conjugate of y of k into w n to the power of minus uh, i'm use r we will get rxy of l so instead of k we have instead of n we have to use l because it is rxy of l not rxy of n so w n to the power of minus n l k now uh, in this we substitute l equal to 0 because uh, this is nothing but rxy of l now i had found out rxy of 0 here so here also we will substitute l equal to 0 so we will get summation N, uh, k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k conjugate of y of k because when I substitute l is equal to 0 I will get w n to the power of 0 which is 1. So r x y of 0 is summation x of n conjugate of y of n and here it is 1 by n summation x of k conjugate of y of k. These two are equal so we have proved the first part and if we substitute y of n as x of n we will get the second part as i had explained a plus jb into a minus jb is a square plus b square which can be taken as magnitude of that particular signal so this particular equation it expresses the energy in the finite duration sequence x of n in terms of the frequency component x of k so we have proved all the properties uh, hope you have understood the proof of all the properties. Thank you and have a good day.